Sometimes you need a reusable element in your prototype. A good example of this is a button. In this lesson, you'll learn how to build a custom component that can be reused within a file. Make sure to download the accompanying files and also make sure to have the latest version of Origami Studio installed. Let's get started. If you're starting from the file, you'll see we already have the assets in place. And clicking on the Patch Graph tab, you'll also see all the patches have been laid out and linked up. Let's begin building the component. First, select the toggle button from the layer list. Then, select all the patches in the patch graph with the exception of the default glyph and active glyph. With everything selected, we'll now go up to the component menu and select group into component. Then we'll type in the name of our component and we'll call it toggle button. Hit return on the keyboard. Congratulations, you've now made your first component. If you look at the layer inspector on the right, you'll see that origami has already generated inputs for our component. Looking at the layer list on the left, you'll notice that toggle button has been added to the component's dropdown. This signifies that the component created is a document component. This means that this component can be only used within this particular origami file. By right-clicking or control-clicking on the component, it brings up a pop-up menu with four options. The first option is component info, where we can edit the information about the component and the ports. Add to user library, which places the component in a private system. This allows you to access the component from the layer list in a new file or any existing file. And lastly, delete, which deletes the component entirely from the document. Let's select component info. Here we get a tooltip that pops out and displays all the information about our component. First is name and details, where we can decide our platform. In this case, we're just going to use all. Next, we have category. Here we'll just type in button. Then description. Here we'll just type, this is my custom toggle button. Under the input section, we have all of the ports that were automatically generated by Origami. Click on Enable, and you'll see the list of options available for this particular port. We have Name, which is the name of the port. Type, which sets the data type for the port. Default, which states the initial setting for the port. Category, for if you want to categorize the port and create a dropdown in the layer info list. And Tag, which defines the port's behavior within Origami. Let's modify two of the ports that have been created. First, we'll take the active glyph and move it to the bottom of the list. Next, delete the word glyph from the name, and then under category, we'll type in glyph. We'll do the same for the port labeled default glyph. By removing the word glyph from the name, and then typing glyph in the category again. Closing the component info tooltip, we can now see on the right in the layer inspector, our new category glyph and its corresponding ports. Let's go inside the component by selecting the component from the layer list, and right-clicking or control-clicking, then select Inspect Instance. Inside the component, you'll see all the patches from when we first started this project and the port patches that are generated by Origami. Let's organize the patches a little bit by selecting the default and active patch and dragging them over, placing them below the other existing ports. We'll organize this further by adding wireless broadcasters and receivers. Click on the output of the default port, then hit Option Enter to insert a new patch. Type in Wireless and then select Wireless Broadcaster from the list. We'll rename the broadcaster by double-clicking on it and then adding the word glyph to the end. Then, we'll select the second input port of the option picker and hit Option Enter to insert a new patch. Type in Wireless again and select Wireless Receiver. A wireless receiver is added to the patch graph and it automatically defaults to the last broadcaster that was created. We'll now repeat this step for the active port by using shortcut keys. With that completed, we now need to add two new ports. This is so we can edit the labels of the button from outside of the component. First, we'll select the second input port of the button label option picker. Then, we'll go to Component Publish Port. This will generate a new port for our component that will inherit the data type and the text that was in the button label option picker. We'll rename this new port to default and then add a wireless broadcaster and receiver. Now we will repeat this process using shortcut keys. For the second port. Now that we have all the ports that we need, let's organize them better by grouping the patches together in a comment group. Select all the port patches with your mouse, then hit Control Option C on your keyboard. This will automatically generate a comment patch around our port patches. We'll rename the comments patch to Global Inputs 
and then we'll change the color by right-clicking on it and selecting purple. This will serve as a visual indicator, so when somebody goes inside the component, they'll know right away where the inputs are. The last step we need to do before we exit out of the component is generate outputs. In this instance, this is so we can expose the interactions that happen with the button. First, go to the interaction patch in the patch graph and click on the down output port. Then hit W on your keyboard. This will generate a wireless broadcaster. Rename the broadcaster to button down. Create a new wireless receiver by hitting Shift W on your keyboard. A new wireless receiver should appear in your patch graph with the same name of button down. Click on the output port of the receiver and then hit Option P on your keyboard. This generates a new layer output for the component. Rename the layer output to button down. We'll repeat this process for the tap interaction. and for the switch. We'll finish by also placing them in a comment group. Rename the comment group to Global Outputs, and again, change the color group of the comment group by right-clicking on it and selecting purple. A nifty feature of the comment group is if you click and drag on it, all the patches inside will move as well. Let's make one more change to our component before we exit. Go to the layer list and click on the icon to the right of toggle button. A pop-up menu will appear and select component info. The last two items under inputs will type in the category field button label. Close the component info tooltip and then exit out of the component by going to the layer list and to the left of toggle button, there's a chevron. Click on that and you'll exit the component. Let's add a new instance of the toggle button to the artboard. Hit command return on the keyboard. A pop-up menu appears and you can see on the left, our component toggle button. Double click on that and it'll be added to the layer list. Straight away, we see there's a problem with our component. The glyphs are missing. This is easily resolved. We can do this by first removing the patches from the patch graph at the root level. Then click on the image field and hit Command C on your keyboard. With the image copied to the clipboard, hit Command Shift I on your keyboard. This will open the tooltip revealing the component info. Select the first default port under Inputs, and in the default field for the port, click on it with your mouse and hit Command V. This will paste a copy of the image into the component and effectively embed it. We'll now repeat the process for the active port. Let's test to see if the images are now embedded. Hit Command Return on your keyboard and double click on Toggle Button. Success! As you can see now, the glyphs are now embedded in the component. Delete this instance and we'll do one more thing to our file. On top of building layer components, you can also create patch components. With the components selected in the layer list, hit Control Option down on the keyboard and this will take you back inside the component. With your mouse, drag select Classic Animation, Hit Color Opacity, and Button Scale Patch. With the patches selected, go to the Components menu and select Group into Component. We'll name this patch component Button Hit Animation. Hit Return on your keyboard and you'll see that our new patch component has been created. With the patch selected, hit Control Option down on your keyboard to enter the patch. Now inside, we'll add two new layer inputs to the patch. Click on the input port for duration under Classic Animation, and then hit Option P on your keyboard. A new patch will appear with the same name labeled Duration. Then select the End Input port for Button Scale and hit Option P on your keyboard. Again, another patch will appear with the same name, but this time we're going to change the name of this port and call it Scale End. Exit the patch by hitting Control Option Up on your keyboard. You will now see the two new ports we created for the patch are now visible. Let's enter a new value on the scale end field and test it out. While still in the patch graph view, hit option enter on the keyboard to add a new patch. As you can see in the list, our newly created patch is now available. Hit control option up on the keyboard to exit out of the component. There's one last thing I need to explain before we finish. 
Click on the tab to switch back to the canvas view or hit Command-1 on your keyboard. You'll notice next to the artboard, there is what appears to be another artboard labeled Toggle Button. This is actually not a true artboard, but the component itself. Or to be more precise, a master component. So any other components added to your document would appear in this similar fashion. This concludes this tutorial on how to build a component.